Hey, hello and welcome to this tutorial. This should be a fairly basic one. It's just one of those things that you use all the time. Uh, but then there's some really sneaky stuff around it that I'm not sure that beginner tutorials mention that much. Um, I'll admit that I've not looked at beginner tutorials in a long time, so maybe they are covering this stuff. Um, but I would like to talk about it myself. Uh, this does come off the back of tutorials that I've done earlier on. Um, I'll put a card above my head here that basically is going to point towards my selection methods video which is going to be really important because I'm going to zoom through selecting things just to get to the right position for things to be uh, filled in with faces. I'm going to cover as many things as I can off the top of my head pretty much but this is things that you use daily, things that I would use daily, it's things that I use all the time and the way that I use them or the uh, you've got to make sure in different scenarios that you're set up correctly and we're just going to go over with some of that stuff. Um, so, having a look at what we've got here, the, most, the most basic example of filling in a face, or what I could do to end this tutorial right now, is just press Control F and that's your face options. And I mean I recommend this for everything in Blender, you know you want to do something with edges, try the Control E for edge menu or just look at the top here and start looking through and you can you know I don't have to tell you how to do this you could just go all right actually I want to fill in a face here I'm going to click on the face thing oh there's a fill button and then you could fill it you know you start do it, working out how to do that and then to get a little bit faster you can look up here and you go to F and you're like all right it's Alt F to fill in a face here um, so now I've got the sh keyboard shortcut and I've learned that myself. Um, and I don't actually use Alt F very often uh, because you can just use the F button to fill in a single face. So that's the, the key difference between F and Alt F would be that if we look at a situation over here where there's more edges, uh, if you can see that, yep, yeah. um, there's more edges. And so what we're looking at here, if I just press F, well, it's completely ignored the fact that I've got different uh, things going on here. So it's ignored that I've got things going on. That, that is still one face. Whereas Alt F is going to triangulate this. That's pretty much what it's doing. So if I press F here and then I press Control T, which is our triangulate shortcut, um, then that's essentially the same thing that Alt F is doing, um, but it's doing it in one move. It's also doing it a little bit better. Um, if you want to triangulate, I'm sure it's here in the face settings. There you go, triangulate faces, Control T. So F and Control T um, creates the edges back in, but now we've got these extra ones here. So if I look at face again, we can go tries to quads, which we can see is Alt J. So that's going to bring us back in with uh, the edges being um, in an order that we'd think of. So if I press F, Control T, Alt J, then we've essentially done what uh, we've got it back to normal. But if I press Alt F and then Alt J, then you know we're doing we're starting to get a little bit faster at doing this sort of thing. We've skipped a step of pressing Control T to triangulate, um, and then what we've got also is actually if I go back to Control F for the face menu settings, we actually have a, a grid fill option here as well, which is going to most of the time work out the correct edges. If there were a scenario where there's an extra edge here, then the grid fill isn't going to work because it's not, it's not, it couldn't, can't work it out. Um, so, you know, if, if you end up in a complicated scenario like that, some of the options that we talked about earlier, if I add that back in, then filling in with a regular face is going to work, but you've not got the edges. So control T can sort of get you most of the way there, but you are going to end up with triangles because there's an odd number of faces. Um, same with Alt F is going to try and work it out, Alt J, same sort of thing that we were just talking about. Um, so filling in that you'd really want to line yourself up with another edge so that you can just go straight to Control F and Grid Fill. Um, 
I don't. I wouldn't see myself using Alt F more than uh, Grid Fill, because I would always work out to have Grid Fill available there. So what you could do is just right click that, assign shortcut, um, and overwrite it to be, um, oops, overwrite that to be, um, oh god, um, Alt F. There we go. So then we'll remove the shortcut on that one. And now I can skip over all that by just pressing Alt F to do the grid fill. It's one thing you could do. Um, but something else that's really interesting about that I don't, so I am I kind of find it fun to do to use this other method if I just get rid of those extras. Um, I often find myself not using grid fill or fill. I just use F still. But instead of doing it in a way here where I'm selecting around the boundary, I often can't be bothered. I know that the, I'm in scenarios where I know that the faces line up and it is just a case of pressing Alt and F, but in some cases you want it to be, um, you want the edges to follow a certain flow that you don't think that the um, grid fill is going to recognize as much. It probably would, but then there's options in the grid fill. We do go back to grid fill, which I've now assigned to Alt F. There are options to change its span um, depending on some scenarios that break it, um, as well as changing the blending type. We, we can get to some of that stuff in a little bit and offsetting it so that it rotates. Um, yeah, so there's, there's more options there than what I've just shown you, but you really want the topology to be good to start with for sure. Anyway, yeah, so when we get to I, I don't use it that much. I just literally sit here and when we actually, instead of selecting the whole thing and pressing F, which is how you'd fill it in, or doing any of those other things I said, um, if we select the edge that we want it on and we just press F, it's going to immediately sort of recognize that we've got um, more edges there. So if I keep pressing F, we can actually fill in that whole thing as much as we want. Um, or rather than just having to press F six times, just hold F down and it'll fill in the whole thing. I kind of find that fun because you can see it going all the way around the mesh in some cases and it's just kind of, um, I don't know, you take what you get while you're working, I suppose. Um, and that can be really useful if we're in a scenario like this where, again, it's based on angle. So if I add an extra edge loop in here, we can imagine this as some kind of steel um, girder on the side of an object. Um, so something that, like a support beam or something like that. I've deleted that because I want to turn these into um, interfaces in a way. Like we can use, I try and extrude it inwards so it's not deleting those end faces. So ideally I'm removing those and now I need to fill it in in a way like this. So you could sit here and fill that in like that and fill that in like that. And we've got, you know, how long that took me. To fill it in. Or you just know that you're selecting that edge there and you hold down F and you filled in the right thing. Um, of course, we can try like Alt F for the grid fill. It's gonna get a little bit messy. Um, it doesn't know what angle it's going on. So we have to change the offset. And again, we're messing around. Like we can get it to work, but I'm messing around to, to make sure that that's working in the way that I want. Um, it's a very useful tool, but uh, you can simplify things just like in different, in some other ways uh, is the situation there. And again, it following sort of, uh, you got scenarios where you start filling in and then you're like, oh, that's a weird one. That's not what I expected. I need to add in that uh, ring loops. So we've got even evenly spaced polygons. And then it's got an interesting way of handling corners. You know, you can't, you can't go around corners. So your, your solution there is pretty much, you can fill it in with triangles. Again, if we pretend this is more advanced, fill it in with a quick triangle from here to here, and then you just carry on. Um, if, if the mesh, you couldn't easily see a way of controlling the flow for that, that's how you can do it. Or if you didn't have that extra edge anyway, if you decided that your solution was like this without any extra edges, then 
you can start filling it in and it will actually you know it's still that uh, it's still filling it in but we've got we need to get rid of all the extra edges there and it that's in in that way it can turn corners sometimes uh, if the setup is right um but again you know and do some of this bring it back to the start and i just hit this with a grid fill it's going to be messed up is it possible for it to work it out i don't really think so there we go so the, with the correct you know we're messing around basically is why i don't use it too much so i've had to rotate this along six and then it's worked out um the simple blending in this case for grid fill or where grid fill can be really useful is if we start looking at um say a sphere here I've not really tried this out i don't again i don't use it that much but if we're missing an entire block like this other methods like alt f uh that's grid fill sorry other methods like just fill are going to kind of not know what they're doing f very difficult and also we've got no information there to to start just filling this in it's going to be a nightmare because we can't we can do that but then we'd have to add in more things here and then we're going to have to like try and move them and then we don't know what you know break a nightmare trying to fill in a gap like that and that's where grid fill becomes the most relevant because i can just press alt f um that i've just assigned it to And we can uh, we can start to get this. Sorry, I was testing the rotation um, to make sure you get the right rotation, all that sort of stuff. And um, and it's going to fill it in. I'd say 100% accurately, but sometimes it can just be strange. Um, the final thing to look at would be on a cube. We look at a cube and we inset two edges here. And then we delete them or we don't delete them or you know an old-fashioned way would be just yet yeah, delete you have to find your way around it try and select down there very like on a complex model quite difficult um but you can pull it off quite easily um so what we're talking about here is going to the add-ons and then just looking at loop tools turn that on it's on blender by default and then press uh, w for your context menu which is where that appears and right at the top there you've got bridge um, i'd advise looking through all of the loop tools and seeing what they do but uh, for right now bridge is going to do that it can be strange sometimes based on the normals it can delete faces in different areas but a bridge is really going to solve a lot of issues there when trying to fill in faces like that um and yeah, I think that's a lot of, you know, if anything gets even more messed up than, than you know, than any of the basic examples we've got on here. Like if there was something crazy coming across the middle of this asset and you look at like, oh, how am I going to fill this in? I, I would say like, don't fill it in. You've got to start making more edges with the knife tool to just start making this have a little bit more sense. And then you can start using other methods to... You know, like if you notice there's an imbalance of loops, you start using other ways to uh, to fix those shapes. Um, but that is outside the scope of this tutorial. I think I've covered all those basic methods and where they work. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next one.